Hello everyone, this is the second part of Chaos Vantage tutorial for beginners. In this one, I'm going to teach you how to export your 3D models from SketchUp to Chaos Vantage, how to add vegetations to it, how to use Chaos Scatter in order to scatter grasses or different kinds of trees, how to set up your cameras, find the best angles, and most importantly, you will learn how to use scene state in Chaos Vantage in order to create different kind of cameras, different kind of styles, all in one Vantage file. Okay, let's dive into the tutorial. I have downloaded this 3D model from SketchUp Warehouse, and you can see the credits of the 3D modeler on the screen. So after installing Chaos Vantage, you can right-click on your toolbar and select Chaos Vantage. Here, you can initiate a live link to Chaos Vantage, so I'm going to click on it. And as you can see, now I'm linked to Chaos Vantage in real time. So I can move around my 3D model, I can change the materials, I can change the lightings, I can change the model, and everything that you can do with V-Ray or Corona, but you will see the changes in real time in Chaos Vantage. So some people prefer to do all the changes and add the materials, lightings, and objects in the 3D modeling software. In the previous video, you can see the workflow that I've already prepared everything in the 3D software. So I've prepared the lightings, the materials, and everything, then just exported it to Chaos Vantage. But in this one, I'm going to go for the other workflow. Basically, I just have a simple 3D model with some materials. The materials, you should do them in the 3D software. You cannot change them in Chaos Vantage, but the other things, it just depends on you. So in this one, I'm going to do the rest of the work in Chaos Vantage. There are two ways to export the model to Chaos Vantage. One is the live link that you can see the changes live. And the other one is exporting a VR scene file or V-Ray scene file. So I prefer to export a VR scene file and do the rest of the work in Chaos Vantage. Okay, now I'm in Chaos Vantage and I'm going to open the VR scene file as we've learned in the first video. The first thing that I'm going to do is to save my Chaos Vantage file. So it's a .vantage format. And what this save is about is the changes that you've made in Chaos Vantage. So I've imported a VR scene file and I'm going to add vegetation, lightings and everything on it. But I need to save the changes. So whenever I'm going to recall this Chaos Vantage file, I can see the changes that I've made in Chaos Vantage, not the VR scene only. So basically the VR scene is the changes in the 3D software and the that Vantage file is the changes that you've made in Chaos Vantage. I suggest you create a save at the beginning. So during your project, you just click Ctrl and S and just do some quick saves. Now I'm going to add a chaos scatter to scatter some grasses in this area. But before that, we need some grass 3D models. I'm going to open Chaos Cosmos, go to Grass tab and import some grasses by drag and dropping to our scene. Then I'm going to select the chaos scatter and as you can see, it will be added to your outliner. I suggest you change the name of everything that you are going to add to your scene so you can be more organized. After renaming it, you can see the controls under the outliner. So there are multiple tabs that I will explain the necessary ones in this video for you. In the first tab, I'm going to select the scattering mode. I can change the max instances, that is the limiter. And the most important part is these two sections that in the first one, you can select the 3D model that the scatter is going to be on it. And in the second one, you, you are going to select models that are going to be scattered. So in this instance, I'm going to select field in the first one so it will be my target object and then i'm going to select my grasses in the second tab one by one now as you can see there are some 3d models scattered to my surface so in order to control my scatter i'm going to the second tab which is surface scattering here you can see the dis distribution mode the patterns that these objects can be scattered on so there are multiple ones i'm not going to select the pattern right now and under that you can see the instances count I'm going to increase the number, but consider that there is a limit to it. As we saw in the first tab, there are a max instances amount that is 1 million by default. So if you enter numbers above 1 million, you won't see any changes unless you change the max instances limit. Now the grass looks a little bit flat and it's look unrealistic. So I'm going to add some variations to it. Consider that we can add scatters on top of each other. So I'm going to import some models from Chaos Cosmos some different grasses, taller ones, shorter ones, maybe some flowers. And then I'm going to create a new scatter and apply another scatter on this field. I will speed this up, but basically I'm just playing around with the settings that I've already taught you. 
I just don't like the look of this grass that I've used, so I'm going to change it, use a different model. Always try different ones to see which one fits your scene the best. Now you can see that the grass is interfering with my stairs, because the surface is under the stairs in the 3D model. So we need to somehow exclude these 3D models. You can simply exclude a 3D model from your scatter. In the last tab of your scatter, you can find two tabs that one says exclude. So I'm going to select my model, exclude it from the chaos scatter. But as you can see, I'm trying to select the stairs and it only selects one. The reason is when you import a VR scene from SketchUp, the models shouldn't be instanced. If they are instanced to each other, they won't be selected as one model in Chaos Vantage. So I'm going back to SketchUp. I'm going to select the stairs and explode them. So they won't be any group or components. You can make a copy of the components before exploding them. So you can have a version with the components for later use. Now I'm going back to Chaos Vantage and I'm going to save my file. It's important. I need to save it before re-importing my 3D model. If I select re-import my 3D model, it won't save the changes that we've already done in the Vantage. So I need to save on my .Vantage file. Then I'm going to select the re-import 3D model. So it will re-import my model and re-imports and it will reload the scene from the latest save of my .vantage file. It's a really important thing to consider. Now you can see that I'm able to select my stairs as a whole. So I'm going back to my chaos scatter, then select exclude and select my stairs. And as you can see, there won't be any grasses under my stairs anymore. Then I'm going to quickly add some vegetations around my stairs here in front of the door. Now I'm going to import a couple of trees, make a tree line there so it will guide your eyes to the building when we are rendering cameras in front of the building. Then I'm going to import my trees for scattering around the building. So I'm going to select the surface around the building that I already separated in a group in a SketchUp and I'm going to set that as my scatter plane and scatter my trees, change the numbers as we did for the grasses. Now that my vegetations are ready, I'm going to the weather tab or the environment tab to fix my lighting. In order to do that, I'm going to select texture and find a well-suited HDRI for the scene. We just need to turn off the sun. Now this one I think is good. And now I'm going to play around with some fog setup. So I'm going to enable the simple fog one and just play around with the settings. Then I can turn on wind and check the affect vegetation box. Now that I have a setup for my day rendering, I just need to save it as a substate. So I briefly explained the scene states in Chaos Vantage in the first part of the tutorial. You can check that out in the description. And what it basically do is saving an estate for each of those tabs that you can see. For example, for environment, you are going to set a daytime, a sunset time or anything like that. Then you're going to save it as a substate. After that, you can change the settings and change the scene to, for example, a night one. Then you can save it as another substate. So how to make a substate? I'm going to this top right section and I'm going to click that little plus button. What it will make is create a new substate for me. Then I can rename it. For example, I will name it as a day. Now I'm going to change my settings to create a night shot. We can change the whole settings. After changing that, now I can create a night state. So I'm going to hit a plus again and write down night. Let's go to the color correction tab and let's create our color correction effects. I'm going to create the color correction effect for the daytime and do the same process that we did for the environment to create substates for our color correction tab.
For the night time, before creating a color correction tab, I need to place my lights. So I'm going to place some lights. I'm going to click on add light. And in the settings, I can select the type of the light, the color, the intensity, and all of that. Then I'm going to make some copies of it. I'm going to select one light to make it look cozy, to match the colder tone in the environment light. After making the changes on the lights and setting them up, now I can change my color correction for my night time and save it as a substate. I'm going to change the volume settings to make those light pump out. I will create another light that I'm going to make it invisible just to make the outside a little bit more brighter. So you can see the interior lights effect on the grass and on the trees and the outside environment. Maybe adding some sphere lights in the trees to make it look cooler. Now I'm going to the lights tab. Here we need to determine that our lights in the building need to be turned off for the daytime. So I'm going to create a substate for my daytime with all the lights off. And another one for the nighttime with all the lights on. Then you can see the outliner. And in the outliner, you can do the same thing. You can hide or unhide things and create substates for them. But in this scene, we are not going to do that. Also, for the materials, we can change materials of the 3D model and save substates for them. But we need to use the materials that are already in our 3D model. So you can see the list of them. You can just replace them with each other. If you want to add materials to your vantage list, you need to create a sphere or a box, for example, behind your scene, apply the materials to them, and then here in the vantage, select them and select the materials from those objects. Now that I've gathered all of my substates, I will go to the last tab, which is called scene states. Here, I'm going to gather all of those together and create one overall scene state. So in the details tab, I'm going to select the daytimes, all of the daytimes, and for the objects, object states and material states that we didn't change anything, I will just select the original one. Consider that whenever you change something in your substate, you will have a warning that calls modified update or create a substate. So it will tell you that the scene is the substate has changed, but you didn't save the changes. So you need to click the update to update your current substate, or you can create a new substate. If you are seeing any warning signs, beside the states in the scene state tab, you need to go to the desired tab and update your substate. After selecting all the desired substates, now I can hit this little button and create a scene state. This will include all of those substates, and I'm going to rename it as, for example, day. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the nice chat. Now that I have two separate scene states, one for day and one for night, it's time to assign them to cameras. So if you go to your camera tab, you can see in the top right corner, it says none. So it means that no substate has been selected. You can click on that and select the substate for your camera. So your camera will be a day shot or it can be a night shot. Okay, now that I have a couple of different cameras with different angles, I can create an animation. You need to click on this animation button. Here you can make animation for three setups in Chaos Vantage. One is the scene animations, which you have imported with your VR scene file. So for example, you've made an animation in 3ds Max and you can import it here, like the car animations that I've made with Mad Car that you can see the tutorial in the description. The other one is sun and sky animation. That is the sun and sky we are using in Chaos Vantage. For now, we are using an HDRI, so we are not going to work with that. The other one is the cameras animation. The camera animations will be the cameras that we've set up and we can have transitions in between them. So what we are going to do is just to drag our camera into the timeline on the camera section. You need at least two cameras to have a transition in between them and have a short animation. And here you can see 
there is a transition in between them. If you want to see them better, you have two modes to see your timeline. You can select time and you can select by shot. So select the shot version and here you can see them better. In this version of Vantage, I think it has a bug for me that it shows my camera thumbnails black. I just need to update my software. Now that you've selected the shot view, you can change the transition in between the cameras. You can right click on it and select the modes. For example, select linear. So it will have a linear effect transition in between them. Or you can select in quad and out quad. Then you have the most important one, which is set duration. If you click on it, you can set the duration of your transition. So it will determine the length of your animation. Then you're just going to create your other cameras. Find the best angles, turn around your model, and search for the best angles possible. I will create a short video about composition in the future. So if you want to continue the animation, we need to add other camera angles. But if you add them to the timeline, you will see a transition will be automatically added between the two shots. But we don't need that transition. We need a simple cut in between two shots because our cameras are different angles with different scene states. So what I'm going to do is selecting that transition and delete it. That will make cut effect between those two cameras. In order to create a depth of field effect on your cameras, you can check the depth of field mark and go to the advanced settings. Then you can control the depth of field effect with the aperture size. I also recommend that you use a lower field of view number for close-up shots. This effect is going to happen in close-up shots, not wide shots. So you need to use lower field of view numbers and more telelens on your cameras. After adjusting the field of view, you can adjust the focus distance. One way is by adding the number and the other way is in the camera rollout on top you can see the focus point option. If you click on that, you can click anywhere in your scene and the focus of the camera will be there. So we can create a nice animation with two cameras, one focusing in foreground and the other one focusing on the building in the background. And then add them to the timeline so it will make a cool animation that it changes the focus from foreground to our building. Sometimes you may feel like you want to see a test render of that shot in the frame. So basically you just stop in the timeline anywhere you want to see the render and just go to the render tab and select a still image and take a render. This will render the current frame that you are on in your timeline. So you can see one frame of that before starting rendering your animation that takes hours. Now that we have all of our cameras, we want to render our animation. You can click on the render button, then go to the sequence tab. You can change the scene state if you want to use one scene state for all of your shots. But we've already done that with our cameras one by one, so we are not going to change that. You can select the resolution to override it, or you can select in the rollout, select use the camera resolution. Or you can select use the camera resolution. And then if you have a good PC, you, will have, you can have ultra quality with 300 samples will do the job for most of the time. If you want a better denoising, you can select NVIDIA AI for your denoiser. Then you will select your frame range, your frame per seconds, and the output file type. So it can be image sequences or it can be image also with an MP4 or it can be an MP4 alone. Then you can just start the render and wait for your animation to get ready. So this is the result of our work. I appreciate that you've watched until the end of the video. Editing these kind of videos are taking too much time from me. So please give me some energy with your likes, subscribes and comments. Thank you.